And today I think we were absolutely robbed. I, I, I fall down with Sian, he's dick tobin without a mask. Did you throw it in? No, no, no. I was probably I was pushed in over the line before it was in in the back of net, so it would have it would have been a penalty if they didn't give a goal anyway. So we were robbed of the whole lot, so we were definitely without a doubt. Should be a rematch. Led deserved it today. Uh, I feel bad for them. Hello, good afternoon, and you're very welcome to Live Line. Sarah, good afternoon. The loud supporters are devastated today. Where do we go from here? Any chance that we could have a replay of the game on Crime Call tomorrow night, seeing as this trophy was stolen? The only way out of it, if Mead were to offer a replay, which they're, they're under no obligation to do so, but I, I would suggest uh, that it probably is the right and proper thing to do. I wonder, though, would there be the same calls if the ball went into the mead net. No, and no. I wouldn't have my no, foot problem. I wouldn't go there problem. I have never seen circumstances like it, as long as I'm a member of this association. The GA confirmed that the referee's report had been received and that the referee stated he made a mistake in awarding the controversial goal. It goes on to explain that under GAA rules, a refixture cannot be ordered as the referee's report of the full-time score is final. Our reporter, Matty Morrissey, is in Navan, where that meeting is being held. This is a very noble county. It would be a very magnanimous gesture by Mead if they agree to a replay. But I can tell you, Anne, it's going to be a long night in Navan. The 2010 Leinster football final will not be replayed. From a Mead perspective, there's no doubt that this matter is closed. In a statement tonight, it was quite clear there will be no offer of a replay to County Loud. If we went for uh, proposed uh, a refixture, we would be surely breaking some rule, or some rule would have to be broken to accommodate that. Mead should have been men enough and sporting enough to come out and say, we won't rob any team of a Leinster Championship. The sense of injustice in County Louth is unlikely to ever pass. Mead's 21st Leinster football title was won on the 11th of July 2010. That's how the text will read in years to come, but much of the GAA world will apply an asterisk by its side. Well, we could see the hurt on you there, Peter, from that day. It's 10 years ago, and I was planning to come in and ask you if the, the pain had lessened, but then I read a quote from you from only a couple of months ago where you said, there isn't a single day that passes where you don't think about that day. Well, Joanne, everywhere I go, whether it's to Dublin, to Walk, or Dundalk, or any part of the country, is like, it, it's, just, it's just what happened on the day. It should really never have happened on the day. But, but listen, the, the time goes on, and you, 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 the, the wounds do heal, but uh, to, as I said to you, Joanne, there's not a day that passes that we don't think of the Leicester final. Like, it was nearly 60 years since we got to a Leinster final, and like, that day would have been a fantastic day for Loud Football if we had won, and in fairness, what happened, happened. But I'm just going to say that uh, there's a bit of, there's a bit of, there's something, there's something in me that I just can't release it at the moment. Like, uh, like we, we played football all our lives. Uh, when the incident did happen, I was in the sideline looking at what was happening, and I could actually see what was happening. And th to this day, I, I don't blame me, I don't blame Loud. I have to, honestly, I totally blame the GEA. Because what happened there at the moment is they, uh, they went outside the, the province, they appointed a referee from Ulster, who they felt as do a great job. I felt on the day, I don't think it was fair to both teams on the day, but the decision he made, I think, to this day will always lay my heart. But sorry, that's surely nothing to do with the fact that he's not a Leinster referee. I mean, they chose, as you said, an experienced referee who they would have considered top of the game. It's not, is it not a bit unfair to come here and blame somebody for making a mistake, as everybody does in a, a game of football early? No, I'm trying to say, uh, he, he was outside, outside the province, he was from Ulster, he took his own umpires with him. As, they, as they, all referees yeah, do. Uh, these are very, very experienced umpires. And in fairness, uh, uh, his umpire singled the flag. In other words, there was a problem. The referee ran in and didn't even give the umpire an opportunity. An umpire who has been working with him for a number of years, a very experienced person, that Martin Sludden uh, talked to Co Park and trusted him. And I, th I just think that th he should have given the umpire an opportunity to explain exactly what he felt happened. He went even then, he told the umpire, put the, put, put the flags up. The goal was allowed, and to me, to this day, I just can't understand that. Did, so, did he tell you that, that he didn't ask, that he just told them? No, I'll tell you what, uh, Joanne, uh, like what happened after the game should never happen in the game. The crowd invaded the pitch. To me, that was totally and totally injustice, and I will condemn that. Uh, uh, Martin Sludden invited me into the dressing room afterwards. I sat down with Martin Sludden, and, he's, and I asked him, I said, uh, that's not a goal, it's an addition in gold. And he said, he said to me, the bottom line, he said to me, Peter was, if I hadn't have given the goal, I would have given the penalty. And I said, well, if you had to give him the penalty, he says, I said, 
to could have missed the penalty. But I'm just saying, he said, what you've done was an injustice. I asked him, why didn't he consult his own payouts? And he just told me to leave the judgment him. And have you spoken to him since? No. I'm just so conscious that Martin Sloden is a person like the rest of us who makes mistakes like the rest of us and isn't in studio here on national TV to come out and defend himself for something he, he did admit that he got wrong, as you said, the following day. And Joe, you'd know all about this because you were turned into this, the villain in the piece for some reason. What was that like? Yeah, and look, as Pete was saying, it, it was very unfortunate what happened on the day. And, you know, I don't think any teams are to blame for what happened after and the repercussions. Um, I, I do stick by Peter with, I think the GA should have made more of a stance on it um, and, and took it out of every, everyone's hands, you know, after the game. You know, it was, it was sort of a circus around the whole, what was going to happen, who, everyone had an opinion on it, obviously through the media and, and everyone, it, it, was, it was driven quite bad and especially for, for both teams trying to prepare for quarterfinals and, and another game in the championship as well. So it, 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 was, it was pretty frustrating, um, especially as a player and the way, the way things had finished up. You know, obviously, watching the game, we can see it wasn't a goal, and I, I've no problem putting my hands up and saying that. Well, do you think that a, a replay should have happened? Obviously, we know at the time that the onus was put on the, the Meath players to go off and decide whether or not they wanted to off, uh, offer a replay, which you all openly said you weren't in any way pleased with having, having that put upon you. But do you think that actually the case was there for a replay? Because we do see mistakes happen all the time, and they can be crucial to whether a team wins or not. Do you think, if, as Colm O'Rourke said in the piece we just saw, if it had been the other way around, there'd be such a clamour for a replay? Yeah, and, and to be honest, I, I, I still think you know the, the, it was put to the players, and we had a discussion around it the, the day after. There were some heated discussions around it, possibly because of the way we played on the day as well, and Evan went, went with that as well. What, was there a split? Is that what you mean by No, not, not at all. You know, it, it was pretty much c conclusive that we, we would offer an opinion back to the county board, and the county board would make the decision and, and relay back to Crow Park. So it wasn't our decision, it was the county board who would relay an overall decision from, the, from Meath. Um, and as I was saying, it probably should have been taken out of our hands and the pressure shouldn't have been put on to Meath County Board to make that decision. Just tell us a little bit about the hate mail that you received down through the years and wh what was it like and what sort of thing, how, how much was it and what sort of stuff did it contain? Yeah, well look, it's like for, for myself, I don't really take it too serious because I, I see it in the, in the whole emotion of the game. Um, I, I do see after the game, as Peter was saying, that what happened on the pitch and, and what happened to other people um, should never happen and, and won't be condoned by anyone. Um, it was a small minority saying that, you know, th there was great spirits on the day with me and loud supporters. The crowds were fantastic and most, pretty much most of the people held themselves in high regard. And, but when you see the likes of Sean Boyle and, uh, and things like that happening there, you know, Sean was assaulted after the game. You know, small stuff like that shouldn't happen to a man like Sean Boyle especially. But, you know, regarding the hate mail, it was it was pretty much it, it was pretty severe. Um, Is it letters arriving it, in your door? It was door? a letter actually received by my mother. Just uh, one, or were there more? There was there was two letters uh, and a lot of sort of pr private messages that were sent to my phone. Um, but look, I, I I I wouldn't take that too serious as I was saying. But it, it is very hard for my mother, who actually received the letter, to open it up. She it was just addressed to Joe Sheridan Centrestown, so she sort of had an idea what it might be. And yeah, it, it was pretty rough stuff in, in the letter that was written. And you'd like to think people who have written that stuff now would like to think they would take it back and, and, and wouldn't say them things now to, to this day. I'd like to think that nobody would say those things to anybody, never mind somebody who's just playing a game of football for his county. But when you look at how things have moved on for both Louth and Meath since then, you couldn't even imagine a Louth Meath Leinster final now, Peter. What is, do you think has happened from a Louth point of view? and? Why have things not developed on from there as perhaps people might have thought they would? Well, in fairness, Joanne, I think you have to take your hat off to Dublin. D Dublin, like D Dublin relays for the last number of years had problems. And I think it took maybe 10 or 15 years for Dublin to get the thing sorted out. Uh, I don't believe in this thing that, uh, that, that the Dublin got a big advantage. Like, if you look at the population of Dublin, it's a bit toad of the population of Ireland. But there's, there's so many sports in Dublin. And, uh, I have to be, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big admirer of Dublin football. Like, you know, it took them 10 or 15 years to win in all Ireland. And the amount of work that they've done in clubs and everything else. Like, and they, I'm, I'm actually chairman of the Lloyd County Board. And I'm looking around and I'm looking, I'm looking at all the different setups all around the country. And you look at the Tavones, the Mayos, and the Dublins. They're the ones, to me, that excelled. We have a serious breakdown between our seniors, minors, and, 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 and development squad. That has to stop. I think over the next number of years, our goal is, is we lost the, the 2010 Leinster final. And I would love over the next 
five or ten years to get back up to Division 2 or Division 1 in the National League to be competitive and hopefully, and for once in all, to win a provisional title. Well, let's talk about one of the big issues then of the moment of, of, over the past week since the GA announced their, their new plans for the next phase. And that is all these questions that are arising over the way various counties ap appear to be about to uh, structure their championships. You're obviously still playing with Centralstown, but is it a concern for you the way this is operating around various dis uh, different counties now that you're no longer representing, say me, then you are, you are essentially a club player? Yeah, it is, it is going to be quite tight. Obviously, we have a championship, I think, starting around the bank holiday in August. So we, ha we have 11 weeks to work with football and hurling. Some counties might not have both, but pretty much most of them would have. So you have to have, obviously, equal amount of weeks, five weeks, five weeks. So it, it's going to be quite tight. We have a structure in place already, I think, um, where you'll have your round robin games with a semi-final and a final which is great and they work out perfectly but there is other counties where it's going to be a lot tighter maybe counties with larger amount of teams senior teams in the count uh, intermediate teams so it, it's going to be hard to try and sort of collaborate all that together and then work to a inter-county season then come october so i think it's the 17th of october that the, the plan is a place for a championship to get started so it's whether as peter was saying i would be a fan of trying to keep that provincial um run in place because uh, it, it you know you can see a lot of people are quite proud to to win a provincial title i know as you were saying in leinster at the minute dublin obviously have a monopoly on it because they've done all the work and how good they have been and it's up to the other teams in leinster to get to that level but i can't see all that fitting in into maybe it depends of how long they're going to bring the championship will they go after christmas and, and run it after christmas to run sort of two two all island championships in the one year i'm not too sure but we'll have to wait for a directive from the, from the ga to see where we're going because if players come out of the club championship straight into an inter-county championship running into christmas next thing you look at player welfare as well and making sure lads are being looked after and i know most of the lads well pretty much every single player playing in inter-county level these days is well able to compete and probably play a game every week and, and i don't see an issue in that but you have to be very mindful of an overrun of players, you have lads playing, not too many play, lads playing dual, dual, uh, any dual stars anymore, but you have to take it. Exactly, but they are yeah. A club. Yeah. So it, 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 you've got to take it all in consideration and see how it's going to affect players, and it, it's going to take a lot of planning to, to see how it finishes up. Okay, well, thank you to both Joe and to Peter for joining us tonight. Now, next up, we're going.